doing it purely out of love. I was like, I am not going to do a fitness class. I don't give a fuck about that. I love Thai boxing. I'm going to teach Thai boxing. That's it. I'm Lewis Taylor and I'm a head coach of Marshall Gym. I got into Muay Thai, so my dad was the original um, owner of the gym. So Marshall Gym is officially like established in 1994. My dad like taught like eight years prior to that. So the gym is what, almost 30 years old, but it's more like almost 40. I grew up in the gym. Like my dad would take me into the gym when I was like three years old. My mum would, my mum used to train as well. So I'd sit in like a little I cram. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'd just be in the gym. I'd be, I'd literally like, be in Thailand, wearing my little, little Thai boxing shorts, be in the stadiums going, hey, hey, like, that's how I got in the Thai box. I was just always there. And I'm just lucky enough where I never fell out of love with it. So that's, that's literally how I got into it. I just sort of was always in it. It's actually not that hard. Oh, really? It's not that hard. My favorite memory of Thai boxing. So if we say all of Thai boxing, fights, training a lot, it was, I was 18 years old. So basically a Thai, a Thai came over here and fought a UK, uh, one of the top UK fighters. And basically his trainer fucked off and left him, was getting drunk and just didn't help him at all for the fight. The Thai still won. But my mum used to like be the official for like the WMC, for, like to come over for the UK. So anyway, we looked after this Thai for like two, three days and he actually spoke quite good English. So uh, ended up looking after him for a bit while he was here. And we kept in contact, I kept in contact for a year. I was gonna have, and I went to Bangkok when I was 18 and I was gonna train at m and Gym and I told him, he's like, oh, come meet up with me. Can, can, uh, so I was like, yeah, come on, I'll meet up with him. I told him what I was gonna do, he's like, I want you to live with me, because I was there for a month. He's like, I want you to live with me for a month. I don't want you to pay anything. I want to take you at my gym. This gym was in the middle of nowhere, like three hours outside Bangkok, literally in the middle of Farmer's Field, like acres and on acres. It was crazy. I didn't know this at the time. And for whatever reason, I'm going around, I didn't know this guy for three days, like three days, really. I was just speaking to him for like a year, and I thought, it just felt right. I went, yeah, I'm going to do it. <laughs> didn't go to m Gym. Just lived with him for a month. And that, that changed my life. Like completely, and I've tell him that that changed my life completely. I lived on a, like a not, not even a concrete floor; it was like a coal tile floor, mattress on the floor. The door was held on by a stick. Like I can literally, literally see through that. Literally, imagine, imagine a stick with a door nailed in. Like, as soon, and you can look through the cracks outside the cracks. It's fields. I'm in this village where it's just like no no foreigners. I'm living with his uncle with like thirty dogs. Literally, used to, you know, like the people that bring Thailand, like you see like little souvenirs. This factory I lived on, like made the souvenirs. It was insane. We would eat on the floor. They would all cook outside and they treated me like I was family because I looked, because I helped look after him. It was insane. Like these guys didn't owe me anything. They didn't, I tried to give them money. They didn't want no money off me. And it was just like, it completely changed my aspect of life. I just, I think I just got my first job in London as well. Or well, it was just before, no, I think it was just before I was still at uni at the time. But you're at that age, you're 18, 19 years old, you're like designer clothes, I was driving a nice car. And I'm in this gym, it was actually held on by a stick, a metal tin heart. The boy, the size of this ring, this must be what, a 16 foot ring, about 15, 12 Thai boys lived in a shed. It was literally a shed. And they'd walk out and there's the gym. And I'm like, and these guys like, they didn't know me, I, was, I won't go to the gym. And they're like, my first high friend telling me he's gonna train here, da 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 da. They didn't know me. They just basically just ragged on me around the clinch all day. Didn't speak for two, three days, but they could see I was like, I was very dedicated. And it was just like, the, and then they welcomed me to the family. So his family welcomed me in. This gym welcomed me in. They had like one Olympian champion there, would just be super lucky at the time. This is like, what, 10 years ago. It was insane. And they just, it was just like, it's, I'm looking at them and I'm like, this is literally so raw, so simple. And these are the happiest people I've ever met. And their work ethic is insane because they have to, and it's mad. And I'm like, wow, like, it just, that's my most favorite memory of tire boxing because one, I learned loads from there. In the deep end, first time I ever go to this gym, they loved the fact I was so passionate and keen. And I came back and I was like, I sold my car, sold all my nice clothes. So, like, and I just, from that moment onwards, I was like, I'm gonna keep it simple. From that basically, that moment onwards, I knew 
All I needed was something I enjoyed, which was Thai boxing, and just be surrounded by good people. Like, and that's sort of, as cheesy as it is, that, that is the fact of it. And that is my favorite memory of Thai boxing. Change your whole perspective. Change my whole perspective of everything, yeah. So that's my favorite That's what Thai boxing taught me from, let's say, 18, 19, it must have been. That's like an like age as well. You get easily influenced. So if exactly. You know, if you go to like a, because you say just before you worked in London, so if you go there. And that's the thing. So after that, I went into London. Yes. And I'm there. And they're throwing money at me. And when I say throwing money at me, they're like, oh, you know, work hard, work a bit late, we'll take you out for drinks, da 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 da. Everyone's doing drugs. Everyone's like, I'm like nope, I've got the gym. I want to be at the gym. I, wa I want to go home to my to my girlfriend who I'm with now. She's now a fiance. Like, do you know what I mean? I've been there since I was 15 years old. Like, these guys in London, they didn't want to go home to their families. They're cheating on their wives. They're doing drugs. It's horrendous. And I'm there, like, no, I know what I want to do. I know I want to be around some good people, my good friends at the gym, my now fiance. I want to do something I enjoy, Thai boxing. I just kept like that. And I just, I, I, that's why I still go to Thailand. That's why I go to Thailand every year, obviously prior to COVID. It, keep, it keep, keeps me a reminder. I purposely go there. I purposely take the smallest bag possible with the most minimal amount of clothes it, for that reason. It's a weird difference that you're here, you have like all your shoes and stuff. You go there, you, all you need is flip flops. Your flip flops and a vest and yeah, some shorts. Yeah. It's fantastic. And some hand wraps and gloves. And you're happy. Everyone's happy. Yeah. Less. Like when we was, when I was sparring in Thailand, like they all play spar, right? They're, they're, they're sparring so sharp, controlled. I'm sparring in 10 ounce gloves. I'm sparring with no gum shield. I'm sparring with just like some basic shin pads. You can't do that over here because, you know, the, well, over here in this gym we can, but most gyms you can't. They go too hard. But over there, like they're, they're the best fighters in the world and they're so playful and respectful. But like, it's the what I love about it's the no ego. It's the no ego. It's the no. It's the no. I don't need all these nice things to define who I am. That's the my. That's what Thai boxing. That's my best memory in Thai boxing. Outside all the title wins and all that sort of stuff for my fighters and that. Oh, yeah. The next question I was literally going to be how's more Thai changed your life, but you basically answered it. Yeah, I think I've answered yeah. it. That's how it changed my life. Yeah. I was never ego. I was never. I was never been an egoistical person. I've never been a materialistic person. It just really grounded me for like what I truly know. What I need to what I need to achieve to be happy. What separates the good fighters from the great fighters? It's the most simplest answer and it's the hardest to achieve. It's just drive and passion, consistency. That's literally it. Like, you got like, you know, like you say, like hard work beats talent. That's basically what it is. The hard work to stay motivated and passion is what makes a difference. Because I look like this, like a very like, like talented fighter is like a very fast car. But he's a fast car with no petrol. The average show, the average car with a full tank of petrol would always go further than the fast car with less petrol. Does that make sense? It's that and that petrol, all that represents is the passion, the drive. That's all it is. If you can say, I, I say, I say this to people all the time, like say the best guys in my current gym. So like, like the Brandons, the Salah, the, the Dan's, the only difference is these guys never fell off the wagon. They stay consistent. When they're having an off day, they still trained. When they're feeling down, they still trained. They did, they powered through the good and the bad, like they powered through the bad days and rode the good days. That's it. Most people nowadays, they want this quick fix. There is no quick fix. If you're naturally talented and you've got the passion, you'll probably get there a bit quicker than the average Joe, but the average Joe can still get there with that same amount of passion. It's just time over drive, do you know what I mean? And that's it. Like and time will tell, that's it. I know some guys that have hit their, hit their peaks at 35. I know some guys that hit their peaks at 27. They both still hit their peaks. Do you know what I mean? I know some, like, this is another great example, like, like some fighters will lose three fights in a row and they're like, oh, I don't, want, I don't know if I can do this anymore. Some of the, some of the best fighters in the world, like Nong Oon. People don't, people don't, Nong Oon is the best fighter in the world right now. People don't talk about when he lost right, a year and a half straight, nine fights straight in the opinion of them. No one talks about that because time always tells. Look where he is now. Or let's say a UK fighter, I think one of the best probably examples I can think of off the top of my head right now is Charlie Peters. He went through a, like a losing streak. After that, he beat Liam Harrison, was UK number one. He pursued his dream. That is, that's passion and drive. Do you know what I mean? You can't... Do you know what I mean? Time and passion is all you need, basically. That's the defining difference between great and good fighters. Yeah. I don't know if you answered this already, but what is the most important thing you've learned in Thai boxing that you apply in your everyday life? Uh, oh, I've got so many answers to that one. Yeah. So what is the most... Probably similar to that one, like, with hard work and consistency, I know I, if, if I know I can do something and I... And I put and I can apply the whole thing. I know I can achieve it. I don't know when. I just know I can. Do you know what I mean? Like 
I always say this, if you can be a successful fighter, you can, you can do anything because it's fucking horrible. It's hard work. The early morning run, you're basically doing a bunch of things you don't want to do, but you know you have to do. And having that mindset of doing something you know what's right, doesn't mean, doing something what's right isn't the same as doing something you want to do. Does that make sense? So that discipline, you can take that anywhere. Running a business, successful relationship, grinding through the bad days. You know what I mean? Life's all about waves, up and down, up and down. If you, like, if you can train for hard fights and, and sort of battle controversy, that you can take that anywhere you want. In training or like even in a fight, how important is emotional control? Oh, it's the biggest thing. The biggest thing, because again, emotion is, emotion is doing something you want to do, but doing something you want to do is not always the right thing. Like sometimes when you feel like you're losing, you just want to grit your teeth and bang. That's what most people want to do. But sometimes if you're losing, you've got to understand why you're losing. If someone's walking you down, sometimes standing and trying to bang will actually make you increase your chance of getting knocked out, right? Because that's what you want to do because you're, you, you're emotional. Where if you listen to your trainer and they're saying, listen, like he's walking forward, move off score, move off score, stay strong, move off score. Like, do you know what I mean? Like that's what you should do. You gotta be emotional. Don't be emotional in the bad way, be emotional in the good way and identify where you need to improve. Yeah. So it's probably the number one factor. Like, you know, like you gotta be able to adapt to the situation. The only way you can do that is with your emotions. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's, it's so important. So important. Probably, probably, yeah, number one, emotional control. So that someone's like, I don't know, angry in the room. Yeah, like when you, yeah, you can't get frustrated. Yeah. You gotta look at it as a job to do. What do I need to do to do the best job possible? Do you know what I mean? Smart, work smarter, not harder, right? Think smarter, not harder. Yeah. I think a great coach is being selfless. I say this all the time, you can't be a great coach and a great fighter. And that's just, people try and argue with me. No, nah, you can't. To be a fighter, you gotta be selfish. To be a coach, you gotta be selfless. It's not about me, it's about what I can give to them. They're completely two contradicting roles. And that's why I don't fight anymore. Don't worry, I get the bug all the time, but I know I, I love coaching more than I ever did fighting. I love how much I can give to my guys. Do you know what I mean? And to be selfless, I can't think, what would I do? It's about what they should do. What can they do? How can I make them better off my experiences? Not make them better, like, and, and like, what my knowledge, not make them better for what I would do. Do you know what I mean? So basically, without going into too much detail, the, 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 the less selfish the coach, the better the coach, I think. And obviously you've got knowledge and experience and stuff as well, but if you haven't got experience and knowledge, you shouldn't be coaching. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> See what I mean? So if you've got that experience and that knowledge, be selfless. It's about them, not me. Do you know what I mean? As a coach, my job is to help them achieve their goals. Better at tie boxing, better at fighting, even better at life. That's my job. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, the less selfish the coach, the better the coach, I think. Some coaches are like, you can tell, like some coaches are like, look at me, look who I train, or look how much of a great pad man I am, or are you doing it for you or doing it for the fighter? Do you know what I mean? Are you doing this amazing combination for your Instagram post, or are you doing this because that's what will help them win future fights or whatever? Do you know what I mean? Do what's good for them, not for me. What's your main piece of advice for people that train and want to take that next step of competing? Chase the better version of yourself. Chase the better version, but be honest with yourself. Be honest. You know, look yourself in the mirror, close your eyes, whatever you need to do, and go, what can I be doing better? Like, use your common sense. We all know where we can improve. You just gotta be honest with yourself to identify what you need to. Do that, chase it. That's probably the best thing you can do. Like, even you know, more sparring, more pad work, more obviously. But are you, you know, when when you get told 100 kicks, are you really doing 70 good kicks and 30 lazy ones? Or are you doing the runs outside the gym? Are you eating well? All them little bits, you know, work on the glue that holds everything together, not just the obvious things like turning up. Just because you turn the train doesn't mean you get good. Turning up and wanting to get good will make you good. Does that make sense? They say, what they say is they say, um, what's it, uh, repetitiveness creates good technique, or what's it, um, Repetition breeds good technique. No, no, no. Good repetition mm. breeds good habits. You can re repeat stuff shit, right? You I can, remember you saying this to me, like yeah. my first PT with you, like you're like saying you can turn up, people turn up, but you have to turn up like and- And want to do well, yeah? Like just cause like, I'm in the gym, I'm gonna get better. No. Good repetition creates good habits. 
bad repetition creates bad habits. Yeah. Does that make sense? So yeah, just, if you want to take that next level to compete, do the extra work in the work you don't always want to do, but know you should do. That's hard as well, like it's not outside the gym, because it's obviously like- It's hard, like, yeah. Doing that, like, turning up for sparring, all like, the like, Yeah. All the stuff outside. Like, like, like listen, look, look, look at me, like, not saying, oh, I'm perfect, I'm definitely not, but I worked in a, I worked for the biggest, con uh, biggest fit out company in London. Very demanding, I would have to get into work at seven, to start the work earlier and probably get home at half seven, eight. It's almost 12 other days outside traveling. I would still get up at four. I would do my running for my own training. And I got to remember like, and then I'd come home at seven, half seven, either run the classes or I would organize personal one-to-ones for my fights. So by the time I even sat down and said hello to my, my girlfriend at the time, well, now my fiance, it'd be nine o'clock. Like, do you see what I mean? So you got, you know, do you want to sacrifice to achieve what you want or not? Just be honest with yourself. If you can't be able to do the extra bit, fine, but don't compete. Just be honest with yourself. If you do, put the work in. And that's it, really.